How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is my channel where I talk about horror movies. So if you like monsters, slashers, zombies, pretty much anything that'll do stuff I can't say on YouTube, this is the channel for you. Today we're talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre here on the channel because not only is there a new movie in the works, but we also have to talk about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game because while there is some troubling updates, I would say, or like updates that make me nervous about that game, we've heard some really good news about it lately that kind of gets me very excited excited for the future. Also, I filmed half this video yesterday, so I'm gonna be wearing two outfits in it. So looking back at the Texas Chainsaw movies, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna offend anyone if I say this was never really box office wise, at least on the same level as something like Halloween or A Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th, for example. It was always lower budget. There were a lot of thrown together movies. The plot gets all over the place. They never really knew who to focus on, whether it was Leatherface or the entire Sawyer family or the main cast of characters. But as weird and not amazing as the last reboot we got was, I think they were starting to move in the right direction with it. I loved the plot of that movie so much, like the setup, not the way it played out, where it was a dumb group of kids who thought they could buy a town that was derelict in Texas, and they learned the hard way that that's not how things work, because Leatherface got activated and he absolutely slaughtered them. There were some great kills in that movie, like the entire bus scene I think is great. I love that shot of Leatherface coming up in the cornfield after the car crash. And that final shot where he drags the character out of the sunroof of the Tesla and just saws her head off in the rear view while the Tesla drives itself away. That was one of the best shots in any slasher movie in a very long time. But not a lot of people turned up for that movie. Like it did well in the first couple weeks on Netflix. We didn't really know if there was going to be a sequel. And it seems like they're going in a different direction for a new movie, which is fine because we're getting a new movie. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Nothing brings me back to the days of being a kid and watching late night horror movies on VHS than eating a nice sugary bowl of cereal. I don't do that too much anymore because I've been trying to eat better and that's why I was so excited when Magic Spoon reached out to sponsor this video. It's basically great cereal that's made with 21st century ingredients and I love that it's high in protein. They have a variety pack that comes in four delicious flavors including fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. And Magic Spoon fits a variety of lifestyles because it's grain free, gluten free, wheat free, free, soy free, it's made with all natural ingredients, and it's keto friendly and full of protein. It's the same great taste you remember, but with natural, all grown up ingredients. Magic Spoon cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five grams of net carbs in each serving, and each of those servings is only 140 calories. So when you're ready to try Magic Spoon, click the link down in the description to grab a variety pack today, and remember to use the code JimmyC at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or you can just head to magicspoon.com slash JimmyC. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll give you your money back, no questions asked. Click the link below or use the QR code on screen to grab a variety pack today and use the code JimmyC for $5 off your order. Huge shout out once again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. These leaks are cool because they're coming from two sources who are very verifiable and they're both basically saying the same thing, which is great. One of the sources is Critical Overlord. He's a YouTuber who I really like. I've talked about him a few times here on the channel. The the other one is Daniel RPK who leaks everything in the movie world and he's got a really good track record. And the third source is Bloody Disgusting who while they haven't confirmed the actual rumors that we're going to talk about, they did confirm that there is a new Texas Chainsaw in development. The title of this movie is going to be Texas Chainsaw Legacy and we even got a little bit of a log line for it. It says the film is set to explore the seemingly peaceful facade of Oasis Oaks, a gated community in rural Texas. Within the manicured lawns and a vigilant security, a protagonist family enjoying suburban bliss becomes entangled in a harrowing battle for survival as they confront the infamous Leatherface and his macabre kin on an abandoned property nearby. I love this description for a few reasons. First of all, it's simple. It just sets everything up right away. There's a new family in a subdivision and they're kind of encroaching on the Leatherface clan's land. That obviously pisses off the Sawyer family and sends them after this new family of protagonists. And I like setups like that for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, mainly because it gives them a little bit of an almost anti-hero sort of setup that you can kind of root for. It gets you excited to see these main characters die. And the other reason that it makes me excited is because it reminds me of one of my favorite remakes ever, The Hills Have Eyes, which is a movie about a group of people, they're a family, they get stranded out in the desert and they end up coming into contact with these mutant people who got nuked and turned into monstrosities and watching them die and then watching the bad guys die was absolutely phenomenal. Also, these movies tend to be shot really quickly. They're very 
cheap to make, which is great as well. So I'm assuming we could see this by either the end of this year or early next year. Honestly, as far as Texas Chainsaw log lines go, I like this because it's simple. I don't like the complicated ones like Leatherface. I really didn't like Texas Chainsaw the beginning because it overcomplicated things by trying to do the same thing as the Thing prequel where it set up characters getting their legs cut off and some stuff like that. And just like, I don't know. I felt like it just tried too hard to be a bigger movie than it really was. The real clincher for me here is whether or not Netflix is making this. Netflix just makes garbage now. I have not liked something on Netflix in so long. The only reason I have Netflix anymore is to watch The Walking Dead. I'm on season 10, episode 14. As soon as I finish season 11, I am bouncing off that service immediately. I'm not paying 22 bucks a month anymore to get high quality streaming. And honestly, with how well horror movies have done lately, I feel like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre deserves to be on the big screen. If you give it the proper marketing, if you put the time and energy in to making a quality product, it's been proven time and time again, people will show back up. Even with a languishing franchise like Saw, which had Saw X, which came off of two mediocre movies with Jigsaw and then uh, Spiral from the Book of Saw, that movie made quite a bit of money. It made more than its budget back. It was profitable. And of course, it didn't hit the series highs, but there was hype back then. Like you always knew a new Saw movie was coming out every Halloween. They were building up to a real ending with Saw 7, I want to say. And yeah, I don't think they'll ever be able to recapture that hype, but they did find a good middle ground with Saw X, and I feel like they could do the exact same thing with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre legacy. Of course, this is still super early in development. We don't know the director, we don't know the cast, we don't know if Fetty Alvarez is involved anymore, so we just kind of have to wait and see. But regardless, I'm excited about Texas Chainsaw Massacre again for the first time in a very long time. And the last reason I think it's a really great time for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre to come back is right now it has very little competition. I mean, even when the last movie came out. We had stuff like Scream 5, Scream 6 on the horizon, Halloween Kills and Ends were all coming out around then. We had other horror movies coming out in theaters. Like there were so many movies that were filmed during the lockdowns that they had to put on shelves and then slowly release over the next couple of years that the actual release schedule of not only horror movies, but just movies in general was absolutely packed. But here we are in 2024 and they've kind of cleared through all of the COVID movies and COVID video games. And now things are starting to get back back to normal. So with Halloween pretty much wrapped up for a few years, Nightmare on Elm Street kind of just sitting on a shelf for now, and Friday the 13th relegated to TV show land, there isn't really a better time for Texas Chainsaw Massacre to come back in theatrical form. And another reason I'm excited about it is my second Texas Chainsaw news story, which is all surrounding the game. And I was initially disappointed when I heard the news that the developer of the game, Sumo Nottingham, was stepping off of the project, but then we got an update from Gun Media then a new studio called Black Tower Studios is taking over development for Sumo Nottingham and that they've been actually working with Sumo for the past few months on content updates and everything like that. And Wes, who's like a big guy over at Gun, tweeted out that they have content planned out at least through the end of 2024. This game is basically like the horror game that could to me because they took a franchise that's never really been all that successful in the box office and they took a model of game that kind of is being eaten alive by games like Dead by daylight and not only did they make a really good texas chainsaw massacre game but they also made a really good competitor to dead by daylight which i think is awesome and when you look at games there are smaller success stories out there like the world war z game that's a very similar situation to what we had with texas chainsaw massacre where they got the movie license and they released a four-player co-op left for dead style game just a few years after the movie came out and that game is still getting updates like three or four years after it came out it just got a new map and a bunch of new weapons and people are still playing it on PS5 and Steam to this day. So I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it's like a great thing that the developer of Texas Chainsaw Massacre has seemingly hopped off the game. It's good that they have a developer that they've worked with before who's also worked on games in this genre like Predator Hunting Grounds and Ghostbusters Spirit Unleashed. And I trust the people at Gun. I think they do good work over there. I just wish their games had less bugs because if there's one thing that keeps me from really getting into their games, it's the fact that they're so buggy and they continue to stay buggy while they release new content that you can pay for. But that's a minor criticism against an overall great studio full of great people. And right after I filmed this video, there was a brand new update surrounding the game that honestly surprised the hell out of me. So over on the Gun Media Twitter, they announced that this game has sold 1.16 million copies. It's reached 16.16 million players, so 15 million people have played it on Xbox Game Pass. But for a video game based on a franchise that's never really been 
the most profitable, especially compared to the franchise they worked on before, which was Friday the 13th, and having it on Game Pass for free that you can just download if you're subscribed to the service. The fact that they've been able to sell over a million copies of this game is really good. I see a lot of the people on Twitter, there's a lot of hate for this game for some reason. They're always saying the player base is dying, but having the game on Game Pass, at least to me, means they'll always have people jumping in, whether they're new or they're returning players. And with a million people who actually purchased the game, I would argue that those people are much, much more inclined to actually keep playing it because they want to get their money's worth. I've played pretty much all of these asymmetrical survival horror games over the years, and the only two that I think reached the level in terms of production value and overall quality that this game has reached is this game, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Evil Dead the game. Unfortunately, Saber Interactive gave up on Evil Dead pretty soon after it came out, which really bummed me out because it was a ton of fun and the DLC seemed pretty cool. But man, they just took way too long to make DLC and also having no battle pass or anything like that. Once you kind of unlocked everything, there was no real reason to continue playing the game. Whereas in this game, there's quite a bit to unlock and it seems like the actual metagame of playing the video game is keeping people engaged. I see people tweeting about it all the time that it just clicks with them and that they use it to de-stress after work. And I love that this game is just setting up this new movie to be something really special. Honestly, if they wanted to make a really good Texas Chainsaw movie, they would consult the people at Gun because they go absolutely balls deep into trying to figure out everything they can about the world that their game is existing in, like everything down to the clothes, the way the people talk. I mean, obviously the way they dress because I just said the clothes, but like the way the world looks, the way the sets are set up and everything like that, their attention to detail is bar none the best in the industry. So like if you want them to come in and do your set design or something like that, or at least come up with some concept art, that would be a great way, I think, to sell people on a new movie because they'd say, hey, they did a pretty good job working on this brand new Texas Chainsaw game, so they're gonna bring that expertise to a movie. I'm back again with a third cut into this video. I'm wearing the same outfit because it's later in the day, but I figured I should tell you they just announced a ton of new DLC for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so if you haven't played it in a while or you've been waiting to get into it, now might be the best time. There's a shirtless Johnny skin, which I know everyone's gonna be excited about, even though I haven't played a ton of this game yet, I've seen all of the Johnny memes and how much everyone loves using him. There's a bride skin for Sissy, which they like looked at old wedding dresses from the 60s and stuff like that to get it all right and it looks really good. But most importantly, there's a new executions pack that got a trailer that's absolutely phenomenal and there's new weapon skins for the entire family. I know there's been some drama around them charging for this stuff, but honestly, the game is not a full price game. It's a discounted multiplayer game, so they gotta make money on the back end somehow. And I'd prefer little content packs like this to a battle pass and the bride skin and the shirtless Johnny skin are both free. So you're gonna get something that's actually good without paying. And then finally, if you guys remember back to the original launch of Friday the 13th, the game, they actually had a virtual cabin sort of mini game you could play where you unlock some of the Jason tapes and everything like that. It looks like they've made something like that for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a game called Petals. It's a narrative exploration game where you get to find out what happened to Maria Flores, who I guess is the whole reason everyone's there. Like she disappeared and all of her friends show up at the Sawyer house and that kind of kicks off the events of the game. And that is completely free to download. So yeah, if you haven't jumped in in a while, now might be a great time to check out the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm actually going on a trip right now for my birthday. We're driving down to Nashville. So if you see me around, say hi, but I downloaded Texas Chainsaw Massacre to my Steam Deck and I'm gonna use my hotspot to give it a few rounds. But anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.